Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this monitor from ASUS. It is the PB287Q model. It is 4K 28 inch Ultra HD. So first to get the monitor out of the retail box, this comes very well packaged from ASUS with nice thick styrofoam inserts so everything should be just fine for shipping. And then of course we're going to need to get this stand installed really quick before we can take a closer look at the monitor. Very simple installation process right here at the bottom. You just pop the stand on like so and then it's got a thumb screwable screw right here that you can tighten. Uh, you can also use a flathead or Phillips head if you want to get that a bit more secure. And now for a quick rundown of accessories and documentation. We'll start with the documentation. This is uh, so you will notice that you're now an ASUS VIP member. Uh, also a quick setup and installation guide for the ports as well as getting that stand installed which you already know how to do since I just showed you. Uh, we also have some connectivity cables here included so very nice of ASUS to include a full size display port cable. This is the cable I would recommend if you're connecting this up to a computer for example because this will allow you to get 4K resolution at 60 Hertz refresh rate. They have also included a more standard HDMI cable. You can also do 4K via HDMI, via HDMI that's no problem. You will be limited to 30 hertz refresh rate, just FYI, so if you do want that higher refresh rate for less motion blur and more fluid movement, uh, again go with DisplayPort. Uh, we've also got a standard AC power cable here, so nice that it's a standard one so you can easily replace that if you happen to lose it or something. Standard eighth inch audio cable for routing this over and connecting up the built-in speakers on the monitor. And then finally this little plastic piece which actually serves as cable management for right behind the monitor stand. So now that the monitor is all assembled, let's uh, run down some of the specs, shall we? Of course, this is a 28-inch monitor, so that's measured from corner to corner, diagonally, and uh, the resolution support goes all the way up to 4K UHD. That's effectively four times the number of pixels as a standard 1920 by 1080 HD resolution display. This one is 3840 by 2160, so that gives you on the range of about 8 million pixels to work with as compared to about 2 million that you get with standard 1080. And then this display also is a single panel and it has the display port input which means that it can handle refresh rates of up to 60 hertz. If you're using HDMI you can still do the 4k resolution you will be limited to 30 hertz however. The PB287Q also has a pixel pitch of 0.16 millimeters, maximum brightness of 300 candelas per square meter and an ASUS smart contrast ratio or ASCR of 100 million to one, a number that simply boggles the mind. Also, you get pretty decent uh, wide viewing angles of 170 degrees horizontal and 160 degrees vertical. This is a TN or twisted pneumatic panel, so that's pretty good viewing angles um, for this type of display technology. Response time is one millisecond gray to gray, which is very fast, so it makes it excellent for gaming. Again, a benefit of that TN panel. And then this is a 10-bit display color panel, which means you can do 1.07 billion colors. You also have two two-watt stereo RMS speakers integrated, so you have video as well as audio with this monitor. And finally on the back you can see the stand, an aspect of this monitor that I think ASUS did a fantastic job on. It has all the adjustments you could want, including height, tilt, which you can do plus 20 down to negative 5. Swivel, of course, is also included, and pivot, so you can switch between portrait and landscape mode. And if all of that is not enough for you, it does have a standard vase mount on the back, so you could remove the stand and opt for a wall mount or desk mount solution if that is your preference. Next, let's talk about connectivity and I.O. We're actually looking kind of from underneath the monitor at the back of it right now. First, I wanted to point off, you actually have real buttons on the back of the monitor, so you'll reach around behind to hit these, but there are indicators on the opposite side. We'll uh, show you the on-screen display as well in just a moment. But moving on to the right from there, they uh, have actually included this plastic piece, which will give you a bit of covering over the I.O. on the back, so that can help keep things a bit prettier. But starting off on the far left, we have your standard AC uh, power input, so that's where the AC power plug goes. Over on the right side, from this perspective, we have our actual video inputs. So starting with a couple HDMI jacks, these are 1.4 compatible, and they can also do MHL connectivity. So if you have a smartphone, for example, with MHL, you can use it to easily broadcast audio and video via an MHL connection to this monitor. To the right of that, you have your DisplayPort connector. Again, that is the connector I would recommend for this monitor if you want to do 4K at 60 Hertz. Finally, over on the right side, we have our input for those two stereo speakers. We also have a headphone output. And then lastly, on the lower right, we have a Kensington lock. So if you're in a less secure environment, you can lock this down so that no one can just up and walk away with it. 
And now for a quick monitor demonstration. I just I actually have this plugged into two sources so I can show you the picture in picture and picture by picture. But as you can see, we're running at 3840 by 2160, which is the recommended resolution. You can also go into advanced settings here and go over to your monitor. And here's where you can actually tell it to do 30 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on what you're capable of. Our video out right now is only capable of 30 hertz, so that's why it's limited to that. But uh, if it was not, we could do up to 60. Now, another thing to point out, since we have what is our standard 1080 uh, image on the screen right now, you can see it's actually duplicated four times. So the ASUS logo over here, that's 1920 by 1080, or 1920 by 1080. And so is the Newegg TV logo. So you can see you get basically four times the amount of pixels that you would with a standard 1080 display. Apart from that, down here in the lower right, uh, we have the buttons where you can access on-screen menus and that sort of thing. They are tucked around behind, but they are physical buttons, so you can feel them. When you push one of them, it'll pull up an on-screen display to tell you what button is what. So starting over here on the left side, we can go into Splendid mode. Here's where we can activate different modes if you're doing scenery, standard mode, theater mode. Those are for uh, watching movies or that sort of thing. You have a game mode that will minimize the amount of input lag that you possibly have. So usually that will turn off post-processing that the monitor might do. So that's going to give you the best response time for games. Night view mode uh, and sRGB mode are also there. So let me just switch over to those. Night view mode is going to make things a little bit brighter for you so you can see uh, when it's dark. sRGB is going to give you a bit wider color gamut. Uh, there's also reading mode and darkroom mode, as you can see. Those, those will uh, significantly dim the display. These are also going to really reduce the amount of blue light that the display creates as well, though, which uh, can be a lot easier on the eyes, especially if you're going to be reading late at night or that sort of thing. Apart from that, in the quick menu, we have a quick fit option. And if you select that, you can basically go in and choose a bunch of different standard sizes for letter, paper, and it will actually give you an overlay on the screen. Let me turn that on really quickly so you can see. Uh, so this is actually the actual size of uh, certain types of documents. So if you do a lot of work, uh, you can pull that up on the screen to see if whatever image or other type of thing you're working on uh, will fit. Uh, and that's a, a nice uh, production tool to have. Apart from that, we have an uh, easy brightness mode access, and then uh, further up we have input select, of course, and when you choose that, it will give you a list of inputs, your HDMI's and your display port. Uh, and then finally, uh, the standard menu at the bottom, and that will get us into some more options for digging into the color, image, sound. And then one other demo I wanted to show you is the picture in picture and the picture by picture settings. So by choosing those, we can turn that mode on or off. I'm just going to go really quickly to picture in picture. And assuming my laptop has not fallen asleep, of course, what we're going to get here is input, or one of the inputs displaying there in the background, and then the other input also displaying at 4K up here in the top right corner. So if you have separate inputs, that will allow you to easily switch back and forth between those. And then the other thing that you can do with that is picture by picture. Um, so let me just switch over to that mode really briefly. And you can see both of these are going to be displayed side by side. So you lose a little bit of screen real estate in that setting, but you can get a full 4K display, uh, downsampled, of course, uh, side by side on a single monitor. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the ASUS PB287Q 4K 28-inch monitor. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and you can find a link to this product down in this video's description. You can also leave me a comment down there, and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.